Hey guys, Umar here and welcome to the fourth video in our Spotify to Apple Music project. In this video, we will be working on the code that fetches the songs from the playlist in Spotify and transfers them to Apple Music. Let's get started. In the last video, we created the React app, set up the pages, and also set up the Redux components. In this video, we'll be writing the code that fetches the songs from Spotify and transfers them to Apple Music. Our app fetches the user's playlist from Spotify. When the user selects the playlist they want to transfer to Apple Music, our app goes back and fetches all the songs in the playlist. When this is all done, we then log into Apple Music and search for the songs in the playlist on the Apple Music platform. This is where things start to get a little tricky because of the differences between how both platforms store their data. You can have one song and that one song can have different names in Spotify and Apple Music. Similarly, you can have an artist, but that artist will have a different name in Spotify and Apple Music, mainly because of typographical errors or maybe the artist has a number one in their name, which is one in Spotify, but the letter one spelled out in Apple Music. To ensure we're getting proper results, when we search for a song on Apple Music, we use the name of the song and the name of the artist in our search parameters. This helps, but it can get a little bit tricky because when we search for a song, we're searching using the name and we're comparing the name we have to the name that Apple returns. If those names don't match, then technically we didn't find the song. There are some ways we can combat this. For example, when we search for a song and we don't find the song because the name we have for the song is different from the name that Apple has for the song, we can then search for the artist and look for the songs under the artist profile that best match the name that we have. This is beyond the scope of this video and this project, but feel free to implement it in your version of this project to make things even better. Another issue we may run into are 429s. When you make an API call, the API responds with the status code and the data. The status code tells you the status of the request. These codes range from 100 to 599. A 200 means everything went well, and a 500 means there's an internal server error. That means there was a problem with the server when processing your message. A 429, however, means that the client made too many requests. In our case, when we're using the Apple API to search for songs, we're doing it in parallel, which means for one playlist, say the playlist has 200 songs, we're searching for all 200 songs at once because it will take a lot of time for us to search for one song, then search for the next, then search for the next, and so on. Because we're searching for all these songs at once, the Apple API may think we're trying to spam it. A lot of APIs have restrictions to the number of times you can call them sometimes in a day, or in a minute, or in a second. This is to prevent people who make millions of calls all at once to an API just so they can crash the API or crash the server. To fix our problem, when we get a 429 response, we wait two seconds, then try again. If that fails again, then we wait four seconds, then try again, then eight seconds, and so on, until we reach a specific threshold. It usually doesn't go above four seconds. We will also be using promises. A promise is a proxy for a value not necessarily known when the promise is created. I'll explain. When we make an API call, the API call will return a value. At the time of making the call, we do not know the result of this value. This is because the API call needs to go and interact with some outside source before coming back to give us the data. It may come back with a result or it may come back saying, hey, I have failed. Either way, at the point of making this call, we do not know the value of the result. All we have is a promise. We can then resolve this promise in the future when the call comes back with a value. You can think about a promise as the number you're giving when you order food at a restaurant. You place an order and you're giving a number. In the future, when your food is ready, you walk up to the counter and give your number, then collect your food. Hence, you're fulfilling the promise. Except in our case, the promise may come back as pending or rejected, which means you won't get your food and everything failed and... You know what? You get the point. In our project, we'll be using promises to make all our API calls. Final thing to note is that when we make an API call to either search or get all the songs in our playlist, the API does not return all the data. If we want to fetch all the songs in a playlist and say there are 500 songs in that playlist, the API does not return all 500 at once. It usually returns the first 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 songs. I think the max is 50. It also gives a link to the next batch of songs in the request. You can then query this link to get the next batch of songs. 
This keeps going on and on until there is no more songs left. That is, it has returned all 500 songs. You can either use a for loop to keep looping through the results or you can use a fundamental programming technique Recursion. We would simply write a function that keeps calling and gathering the data as long as the next field in each call is not null. If it's null, we simply return all the data that we've collected so far. This is one of the benefits of knowing recursion outside programming interviews. It can show up in real-world interpretations like this. We do the same thing in our search function. When we search for a song, Apple Music returns the first 30 results that match our search parameters. It also sends a link to the next set of 30 results that may potentially match our parameters as well. We do not have this in the code for now, but in the version that we'll be deploying in the next video, I will implement this. Stay tuned. All right, enough talking. <laughs> Let's jump into the code. The first thing we'll want to do is modify our playlist page. When we get our access token, we'll dispatch an action to fetch our playlist from Spotify. When the action completes with the data, we'll dispatch the data to our reducers so the reducer would update the state of our application and our UI will change. Let's jump into it.
can see it is currently fetching our playlist from Spotify so that part is done now that the playlist page is done and we can see our playlist when a user selects the playlist like this or like this we want to then go and fetch all the songs in this playlist and prepare them to be transported to Apple Music we simply take the name of the song and the artist who sang the song in some cases there are multiple artists so we need to get each of the artists and put them in a list so we can then use that field to search for the song on Spotify. Let's do that. We're done writing the code that fetches the songs from the playlist. Let's take a look at how that data looks like. Say I select the Christmas and the Upbeat playlist and click transfer. It goes through and fetches all the songs in those playlists. To see the songs, we simply go here, check our Spotify reducer, and in our transfer, we can see that we have this playlist here named Christmas and all the songs in the playlist. So the track name and the, and the artist as well. Same thing with our Upbeat playlist. We have nine tracks in the upbeat playlist along with the name of the songs and the artists who sang the songs. We will then transfer this data to Apple Music so that Apple Music will use the name of the songs and the names of the artists in the songs to search for the songs. Then we'll compile them and put them in a playlist. Let's write the code for that. Thank you. 
Okay, now that we're done with that, let's test it out to see if it'll work. Um, I have opened my Spotify playlist here on the left and my Apple Music playlist here on the right. Let's try to transfer a couple of playlists and see if, if that would work. We fetch our Spotify playlist. Let's transfer our weekly salt set playlist and our upbeat playlist. We click transfer. And boom, it works. Unfortunately, there's a lot of songs that couldn't be found in our weekly salt playlist and our upbeat playlist. But if we look to the left here, we can see that those playlists have been added and the ones that could not be found, you know. Again, as I explained, there's multiple ways we can go about this, but for now, this is what we got. In the version of the application that I'll be deploying for you and anyone else who wants to use in the next video, I'll try to implement some of these techniques that'll make sure we find the songs that are in the playlist that may have a different name or a different artist name. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, in the next video, I will be deploying this application to the general internet for you all to use. Right now, everything we've done has been hosted on my local machine, and so you can't access it. But in the next video, we'll make it public to the World Wide Web. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Peace.